Oh man, elections. Hot topic here in 2017. You ever wonder what it would be like if, if a presidential election, like one of the candidates was just like, like he somebody asked him a question, it was like a really hard question, he couldn't handle it. So then all of a sudden he just does this. Dare to dream. All right, guys, we got to get get going. Uh, Mr. Shaw back again. Welcome, welcome. Here we go. Uh, so in 1952, uh, the election was between uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower and Adelaide Stevenson. Uh, so again, Dwight Eisenhower, well, again, make sure you guys get the stuff that's in the red in your notes packet. Uh, here are their buttons. Again, we got the man of the hour versus our next president. Let's see what they've got. Uh, Eisenhower is the hero of D-Day, okay, so he's got that going for him already. He was nominated by Republicans. Uh, he was very popularly known as Ike, okay, so Ike favored less intervention. What that means is he wanted the government to be less involved in people's lives. Uh, he was named, he named the quote-unquote commie fighter, Richard Nixon, as his vice president, uh, and that was very controversial at the time because Nixon actually was removed from the ballot, or he was almost removed from the ballot because he had a lot of links to corruption, which is going to become relevant when Richard Nixon becomes vice president. But anyway, what uh, Nixon ended up doing was he gave a speech about uh, his dog, Checkers, and uh, it, it was like, you know, talking about just how, how he was just a, a man of the people and like how he loved his dog. And it was just this really like intent, like really funny speech, not funny, but like this speech that's just kind of designed to make him seem like a, like somebody that is trustworthy. Uh, and again, it, that saved him. And then Ike, Dwight D. Eisenhower is going to win this election very handily. Showing you right here, again, you see the, uh, the electoral vote was 83% to 17. Uh, popular vote a little closer, but again, he won by, uh, you know, over 6 million votes. Uh, in in the 1952 election, uh, he uh, Dwight Eisenhower had what he called a dynamic conservatism. Uh, dynamic kind of like that word means like changing or m like kind of malleable. So what he what that meant was is that he was conservative in government and liberal with the people. Now this is not really a thing that. Uh, that really is, is brought up very much anymore. But basically, he wanted the government to be conservative. He wanted them to be fiscally responsible. And he did not want the government involved in people's lives. But at the same time, he wanted the, to be able to help people when they needed it. Uh, so I, again, this is kind of similar to Franklin Roosevelt's, uh, you know, the New Deal plans, you know, all of that stuff is still around. And that's really not going to change. Uh, they are going again, and I will point out too that this is uh, the first Republican to become president in over twenty years. No, yeah, right at twenty years, because FDR was elected in nineteen thirty-two. So for twenty years, the Democrats had control of the presidency. Uh, anyway, so the uh, government was much less involved than the Democrats, uh, and this was a an era. This was an era of economic prosperity. They had a lot of technological advances during this time too. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, but it's just really a, a great time to be an American in the 50s. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a lot more about the culture and what to, uh, you know, what to expect going forward there. Uh, so in 1956, again, it's the same guys, Eisenhower versus Stevenson again. Uh, and I love this Adelaide Stevenson pin. Like it is just the funniest thing to me. Because uh, again, his um, Eisenhower's uh, slogan was, I like Ike. And Stevenson, again, Eisenhower was so popular, like there was very little chance of Stevenson getting in. Uh, but so his button read, I like Ike, but I'm going to vote for Stevenson. It's just like, come on, it's like the lamest, lamest slogan ever. Anyway, uh, so as you can kind of guess, uh, Eisenhower is going to win again with the only uh, portions that are going to uh, you know, going to Stevenson are going to be in the South. And hey, actually, Missouri does uh, go Democrat there. 
All right, so this brings us to Sputnik. Nice little animation there for you. You're welcome. Uh, in 1957, Sputnik 1 is launched into space by the Russians. So the Russians have beaten America to space. They have the technological edge. Okay, so there's a lot of fear uh, during America at this time. They think that this is like a Soviet spy satellite. Um, you know, it, realistically, it probably was just, you know, exactly what it said. It was, they were just, it was a... a a satellite that is circling the globe, uh, just you know, trying to uh, get more information for the the Soviets about what's out there, what's in space. So this is bad. Okay, the Soviets launching Sputnik is is very bad, uh, and we are going again. The United States is going to have to come back from this uh, in a really big way. So how do they do that? Okay, so first off, uh, again, as I said, Sputnik is going to increase these Cold War fears. Uh, what they the, the United States develops NASA. Again, everybody should know uh, what that is. Uh, again, they, they're going to, I think that is the U United States space program. Uh, math and science is going to be the big main focus in schools. They're trying to increase math and science so that we can, uh, we can get people up into space. Uh, if you guys haven't seen uh, Hidden Figures yet, uh, it's a really good movie. I highly recommend that. Uh, anyway, so Americans are going to fear with, with now with the the Russians in space, uh, Americans are going to feel fear neutral neutral nuclear attack more than ever. Okay, so we saw the video in in class of the duck and cover uh, that that is going to be shown to uh, to school age children. Uh, we are again bomb shelters are going to become much more common now, and the Federal Civil Defense Administration was created during this time to educate the public on nuclear emergencies. Again, like so the duck and cover video that was made by. By the Federal Civil Defense Administration. Again, we saw Bert the Turtle, again teaching us about uh, about what to do in case there's danger. Uh, you see, and, and again, we we didn't practice it in class, uh, although I was, you know, perfectly perfectly fine with practicing. Uh, but again, they would get under their desks uh, in case of a nuclear bomb. They would have sirens that go off, similar to our tornado sirens. You would hear those sirens, and you would get under your desk uh, just in case of a bomb threat. All right, so I want to transfer a little bit over to uh, economic aspects uh, of life after World War II. So main thing you need to know is that there was a huge economic boom during this time. America was, in, in the 50s, was the industrial world leader. Uh, the United States had about 6% of the world's population, but produced about 50% of the world's total output. Uh, so... Military spending remained like remained high during the Cold War. Again, we're we are constantly trying to outdo the Soviets. Uh, after the after the war was over, the government lifted the wartime rationing as well. So uh, that is going to allow for a surge in spending. People are going are not going to have to you know limit themselves to what they're purchasing as they did during the war. Uh, so that's going to lead to a lot of a lot of opportunity. Uh, and then we do have the technological advancements I mentioned earlier. I'll, I'll get a little bit more specific with that uh, here in a second. There's also a huge population surge and, uh, and increased spending are all going to lead to this huge economic boom. So basically, advances in technology such as cars, um, there's going to be po a huge population surge, a bunch of people getting married, a bunch of people having babies. Uh, have you ever heard the term baby boomers? That's definitely happening, dur happening during the 50s. Uh, and then increase spending. Okay, so we can. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on uh, in the 50s that's going to help us help us kind of determine where the where America is going to go for the remainder of the century. Uh, so again, real quick, I love this. After total war can come total living. It's like, man, that guy. I hope that I hope whoever made that slogan got a raise because that's legit. Uh, again, you see, like uh, all all of this stuff. Like, again, you got the refrigerators, the TVs, uh, all of that stuff is going to be very commonplace in the fifties, or at least uh, you know more commonplace than before. Uh, so we have this idea of consumerism. Okay, that is back again, uh, which we, you know we had the consumerism of the twenties, uh, and that was built on a lot of you know a lot of credit, a lot of installment buying, uh, and so people are going to kind of go back to that. But now we have a lot more safety nets built in, like the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, is around to insure people's bank deposits. Uh, you know all these other you know the the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, to make sure that the stock market you know there are that people aren't. Playing Playing the stock market, uh, all that stuff is going to help us to spend money, but not have to worry about a second, uh, you know, stock market crash or a second Great Depression happening. 
Uh, so anyway, they, the economy is going to be based upon purchasing of convenience goods. Okay, so these are, again, convenience means things that you do not need. So, so for example, a TV. Now, again, you guys probably think that you need a TV. Um, but again, all those things would be filed under convenience goods. Uh, again, buying on credit is popular. It's also easy. Okay, this is the first time we're going to have, uh, you know, credit cards. This is going to be like the, your first. It's like right here it says a credit identification card. Uh, for the Diners Club, again, you're going to get a certain amount, uh, and that, again, this would be your literally your first credit card. Uh, we also have massive shopping centers built. Uh, this one here uh, is a, I believe it's a famous bar, uh, which was bought out by J.C. Penney, I believe. I think this is from St. Louis. Oh, no, here we go. So we have this J.C. Penney. I think this was one of the first ones in St. Louis. Uh, this one, too, I think was famous bar. I can't really see, I can't really see it. But anyway, yes. Oh, yeah, this is a famous bar uh, from 1955 in St. Louis. So, again, a lot, just a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of people who are, are focused on buying buying things. They are, they're, they're living a, the dream now. Again, it's a lot like in the 20s, people thought the war was horrible in, the, you know, in World War One. So we're trying to, like, get over that. We want to enjoy life. 50s similar thing okay people are wanting to you know there, there's all these new things they want to enjoy their lives they want to you know be able to reap the benefits of you know surviving a war and you know just being in one of the most powerful countries in the world uh, last thing here is that I put a star by this one is that high employment in the auto industry uh, the, the reason that was is because car models changed very often uh, during the 50s was pretty much the golden age of cars uh, there were you know constantly cars being just just put out so many different models um, and there and so like because they were constantly changing models it allowed for the like the employment in the auto industry to remain high all right, so this brings us to the GI Bill. So that is also known as the Servicemen's Readjustment Act. Uh, this is designed to help ease veterans back into the economy. Uh, when veterans come from come home from uh, from any war, uh, it's always going to be a difficult transition back to quote unquote normal life. So the GI Bill was meant to uh, you know try to help them with that uh, or with that transition, at least financially at first. So basically, the first thing it did is that it offered low interest loans to buy houses. Um, so then it, like you see right here, it says veterans, if buying a farm, home or business, learn about guaranteed loans. Uh, again, they're gonna, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff like that that is designed to help veterans uh, reintegrate into the economy. Here is FDR signing the GR, the Servicemen's Readjustment Act. Uh, and then we have a couple other things. Uh, first of all, or actually just really one more major thing is it's going to provide money for college tuition and books. Uh, the, like so this is now basically whenever you get home you you know like they they said all right you have served your country well you we want you to be able to have a good education that's going to help you get a better job uh so you're going to see things like this that it's like the the guy you know the the veteran says shall i go back to school like you're going to see that all over the place and that it's designed you know to help them uh you know help them be able to have a normal life again uh, and this is like this. The GI Bill is very important. Put a star by this last one. Uh, it's going to make college education available for many more Amer Americans than before. So now, if you if you serve in the military, now like that is not you're not just going to. You don't have to just serve in the military for the rest of your life. You can theoretically go back to school and then get a regular job. And so, like, even though uh, even though you might your family might not have money, if you go to the military, they might they would pay for a good college education for you. So that's really awesome. All right, so this leads us to the baby boom. Uh, the baby boom is probably the most recognizable thing about the 50s. Uh, and so basically, the, the Depression ended in World War II. And after the Depression, when things were going well again, 7 million Americans got married in the 1940s. Uh, most women were married by the age of 20, uh, which is very strange nowadays. Again, you, you like most women don't like wait until their 30s uh, to get married. I mean, again, that's not all women, I'm just saying. Statistically speaking, in 2017, more women are waiting later. Uh, but anyway, in the 50s, they didn't want to wait. They everything was awesome. Uh, you know, thing like the war was over and uh, and the economy was going great. So they wanted to uh, reap those benefits, and part of that was getting married and having babies. Uh, so again, that that is again it says with marriage and marriage and prosperity, the baby boom occurred. So basically. 
what happened was that there were young women that were getting married like by their 20s and then there were also older women like their moms were, like those women's mothers were also having babies again so like at like we had basically two groups of women who were having babies at the same time which is why there were so many there was such a huge increase uh, in uh, you know in population during this time I think I have a, uh, a graph to show you here in a second uh, and these babies are going to actually aid the economy uh, with supplies needed, such as diapers, baby food, and clothes. You might not think that the that babies would be a big help to the economy, but they are uh, because they, uh, you know, th these things, diapers, baby food, clothes, somebody has to produce that. Okay? And that means that somebody has a job. And with the more babies that are out there, that means that there's going to be more jobs for people uh, to make those things that, that these families need. Uh, yes, so here is my graph here, and we'll finish up with this one right here. Uh, so again, you see uh, from 45, like these are the births in the thousands. Uh, so we have three, like like right around the like three million births um, in uh, you know in the 40 in the early 40s here. Then the war ends in 1945, and then boom, skyrockets. Uh, I mean, to over four million births, um, or I guess no, not four million. This would be like 400,000. 400,000, yeah. So that'd be like 400,000 births uh just just here again in like all the way up until like right at like 1964 65 and then it would kind of normalize again but again back in the depression people aren't going to want to have children uh so after the depression after the war is over then again the baby boom starts okay anyway guys that's it for this one uh, i'll see you next time for the uh the conclusion uh thanks for watching see you next time